Someone else? Come on. You're adorable. Come on. What do you got? Nothing? Someone else? I can keep talking. Yeah. What would you like? God, you're so, you're so polite. <laughs> That's why, why, where were you before? I kept asking. You have talked about CGI. Yes. Ah, computer generated, computer generated imagery. Okay. If you go online today when you go home, okay, Google Turbo Squid. T U R B O S Q I D. Write that down. Turbo Squid. Okay. What it is. It's a model farm. You'll find some free stuff there. Okay? It's everything from cars to people to airplanes to buildings to city streets. When you see the city streets in, in, in a lot of comics these days, it's not like the old days. It's, there are streets that have been built in three dimensions. In, in, in computerized three dimensions that people are now using to draw on top of. Okay? It's how that consistency is achieved. In English, the word is verisimilitude, which is something other than realism. It's believability. Okay? Verisimilitude. And verisimilitude is achieved, in my opinion, by consistency and by by using models. Akira? By, by Tama Katsuhiro? Akira? Someone? You? Only one person? Two people. Yes, three people. You know. Akira is a, an astonishing piece of work. I'm not a fan of the Japanese style. It just doesn't interest me. I'm, I'm a very Western guy. I come from Europe Junior. You know, America is Europe Junior. And it wasn't... Thank you very much. It was not until I discovered that there, he's got 25 people drawing that at the same time. It's not one person. Which is why he can have this beautifully devised, devised and beautifully realized room. And then the next panel is the same room with a slightly different angle. That's what you can do now with CGI. Okay? That's how you can maintain consistency. So today, when called upon to draw the Batmobile, the Batplane, Anything, anything of that. It doesn't involve figure work. I will use a model. Because I owe the reader the consistency of verisimilitude. Does that make sense? Yes. Louder, please. No, no, I knew you had a question. Let's make the question really loud. Ah, great question. You draw the hell out of them. <laughs> Seriously. Do you really draw all Yes, them? absolutely. Yes, yes. What I do is I, ha I, I go from a fully realized, uh, you know, three-dimensional re rendered image to its barest bones of wireframe. Okay? I take that wireframe and I draw the hell out of that wireframe. I make that wireframe my drawing. I, I use it as, the, uh, as an armature, as a skeleton underneath. Yeah. And I apply texture photo with Photoshop. I also add, I add tech, I add blacks. It becomes a drawing. It's, one of the things that's happened in my work, I mean, I've been doing this for nearly 40 years. And one of the things that's happened is that I've become much more systematic. I'm an organized person. When I started out, I was an artist. Now, I'm a businessman. And as a businessman, it's an imperative to me that when I get up in the morning, I have a pretty good idea of what's going to be finished and left on my desk when I leave that night. My office is downstairs, you know, so I go upstairs. And one of the ways I do that is a flowchart and organization. I have lists of everything that has to be done. I have lists of everything that has to be found. I have two huge filing cabinets filled with photographs, which I use half of the time, the other half of the time, I go to Google. I find everything I need there. When I do, when I take that, 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 that automobile, that airplane, and draw on top of it, I have a photograph, a 
what the actual thing looks like in front of me. So I both I have that, that armature, that skeleton, that exoskeleton, that endoskeleton, if you will. And who makes the frames? Pardon me? Who, who makes the frames? Is it yourself? That, that's go to Turbo Squid. They know these exist. I'm not building them from scratch. Mm. Okay? They exist. You know, they, some are free. The free ones are shittier. The, the, the more expensive ones are better. But they are really there. Go to TurboSquid. You'll see what I'm talking about. And unfortunately, you'll have to not use 3D Max or Maya to actually build these things to, to, to manipulate them in any way. But there are also, there's also Google SketchUp. You know about SketchUp? Ah, uh, you know it's about SketchUp. He didn't tell you. So you have a friend here. He refused to tell you about it's SketchUp. My brother. It's your brother. You didn't tell him? What kind of brother are you? <laughs> Look at this. That's family brother. secrets are kept. That's pathetic. SketchUp is the place to start to learn how to do what we're talking about here. Google Sketch, it's, it's a much more primitive program than 3D Max and Maya. But you can actually go in there and manipulate shape and, and, and build houses and, and have houses that, that already exist and manipulate them and, and do perspective. You know, and you'll learn how to do this stuff. Okay. Shame on you. <laughs> Unkind. I wouldn't call my brother either. They? No, I'm, I'm there, but it's just between you and me. Someone else. Come on. Grown-ups? Children? No? Yes. I'm, I'm, look, if, you, if these people don't care, I'm willing to talk to you. You're, you know, you're adorable and I can chat with you. Are you still drawing stuff on paper? Oh, absolutely. Are you composing everything in Photoshop? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you come, if you come to, the, to the festival later, if you come to the table, I've got with me a lot of material that are, that are pages, like, 14, uh, like uh, 14 by 18 pieces of paper, which are filled with figure work, which have then been composited into Photoshop. Because what I, 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 I've given up the value of the, thing, of the finished page. I don't care about the finished page. Because for me, the finished page is what's reproduced. Does that make sense? Okay. So the page itself exists digitally and in reproduction. What I'll do is I'll do the various elements. You know, if I've got a sequence, you know, one, one, of the, one of the tropes of comics is that car chases don't make any sense. So because of that, I do everything I possibly can to find a way to do car chases in my stuff, to see if I can make them work. Okay? And I've done it a number of times. Come on down. Bring your bed. Don't mind them. They don't, they don't really care. Come on, keep walking. You can do it. Come on, that's right. Nice to see you. So, so the, the, pay, the actual page itself is the panel borders are there, okay? And frequently, what, what I'll have in lieu of finished panel art is indications of, of, of placement. Something as simple as this. Job, I was a rung above the bottom. My last job, I was a rung below the top. 
that was 15 years worth of work. And I learned a great deal about how I do comics today doing that. You know what the phrase swing set means? Okay. Um, what's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite American TV show? Yeah, well, you, you, what's your favorite American television show? Good call. Okay, see? You, you, you snooze, you lose. Um, Deadwood is a perfect example of what we're talking about here. Because Deadwood, you really like Deadwood best? Yeah. Okay. I'm not questioning you, Ted. It's okay. But think about, the, about uh, Bullock and Star's store. Okay, the store, the, the store they had? Okay. That's a standing, it's called the standing set. Okay? That set was built to be used for that purpose. I guarantee that in the course of three seasons or four, okay, that's right, Germany was three, that's right, as opposed to three, right? That, that inglorious bastards, I'm kidding. Um, I guarantee in the course of those three seasons, that set was used for something else. They moved furniture around, they repainted it. That's called a swing set. When you watch, um, a crime show, a Law and Order series, an episode of Law and Order, Why Are You Watching My House, whatever, the new series. They've got a doctor's office, they've got a, mo a morgue, they've got a laboratory, they've got a lawyer's office. Every week, those offices get repainted and reshifted and reused. Walls get moved around, different furniture comes out. I'm doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, I've got streets cities, apartments, homes, all sorts of different stuff, which I reuse, redress, and rebuild. Everything intended to make it possible for me to do the best job I possibly can on that one page a day. Because it doesn't matter. You are not being paid for the work you do. You're being paid for the, for the money you're earning your client. And I am best serving my client by delivering the highest quality product I can. It is necessary for him to know the, the effort and labor that went into it. All that sweat, all that labor is irrelevant if the material isn't there when it's supposed to be. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so much of what we're talking about today is almost moot. Because the idea is to draw the hell out of what's left figure out a way in the beginning to eliminate as much drawing as possible. I know that sounds just terribly, terribly wrong to those of you who are romantics, but I'm a disappointed romantic. You know, I'm a romantic realist. Okay? And I've learned over the years that I am best served by figuring out the, the, mo the, the most efficient way to use as many shortcuts as I possibly can to achieve the best goal I possibly can. Because what matters to me in the context of the work that I do is characters who act and act interesting in, in the world in which they exist. When I did American Flag in 1983, I learned a valuable lesson about me and my work, which is that the world that the characters exist in is as important as the characters themselves. And that applies directly to the use of computer-generated imagery. Because I can make those, you're, you're going right back to your question, how do, that, how do I make that, that, that model of my drawing? That's what I'm doing. That's precisely what I'm doing. I'm warping and twisting the computer generated idea into my work. Okay? One more. Am I done? Great. Right. You, know, you don't help at all. You know that. You're not helping. One more. You have, you have something on your mind. No? Okay, you're, you're acting like you have something on your mind. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm really impressed. Someone else. Someone up there. People whose pants I can look up. No? Cowards. Yes! A man, a man of courage and confidence. You, wow. You worked with Neil Adams. I did. Uh, how much of Neil Adams is still in you? Nothing. <laughs> What? What? Why? Because I don't believe the Earth is shrinking. I don't believe that, that stuff he's been talking about. He heard about, you know, I don't know. 
Huh, you haven't heard? Pay attention. Uh, no, he's, he's, no he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a different person. I am too. Uh, no, I, I, although I feel I learned to draw better from working for Neil, I believe I learned how to do my job best from working for Neil, for Gil Kane, and for Wallace Wood. Uh, and in, significantly, Gil Kane never learned how to use reference material. He never learned how to take a photograph of that car and make an interesting drawing of it. Because he came out of an age where everything was generic. His cities were generic, his guns were generic, his suits were generic, his automobiles. Everything was sort of in this plastic way that never reflected actual reality. And I believe it hampered his work to such a degree that when it time, when in, late in his life, he tried to work with reference. And he could not. He could not figure out a way to apply what he was looking at to what he was drawing. Which I found tragic and sad. Because I believe that drawing realistically, at least in the context of creating a world that's convincing, is one of my biological imperatives. You know, when I draw a suit, it should fit like a real suit. And I know how to do that. When I draw a guy sitting in a car, the guy should feel like he belongs in that vehicle, in terms of proportion and scale and presence. Why do you ask about Neil? It stands in your Wikipedia page. Sorry? It's the first part of your page on Wikipedia. Ah, yeah, because well, you see, I didn't do the big page on Wikipedia. That was done by some move. You know? <laughs> My first page on Wikipedia was so completely wrong that my attorney came in and rewrote it from top to bottom. It had my age wrong, had my influences wrong, my, my tastes. I mean, some guy, whoever, you know. But then again, let's not forget that on Wikipedia, after Sarah Palin revealed her utter and complete ignorance about American history, someone came in and started rewriting the Wikipedia page about what she was talking about to accommodate the Wikipedia entry on Paul Revere to her idiotic beliefs. So don't trust Wikipedia. It's easy to lie on the internet. Sarah Palin. <laughs> what else? Someone else. One more. Come on. Come on, you cowards. You're actually pissing away your afternoon chatting with me. Yes! Yellow shirt guy. Uh, do you think uh, artists nowadays are doing uh, digital, digital media well? Yes. You do? I do. Uh, you don't, obviously. You're, you're, that, that's a, it's, a, it's a trick question. You don't think so. <laughs> Why don't you think so? It says it over What's that? It over Really? Yeah. Like, for example? I don't know his word. I like Chuck stuff. I think it's really cool. Yes. Oh, I think. Who? I, Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson, God. Dave Johnson is fantastic. Best, com best, best artist and cover artist in the business, right? Yes, Dave Johnson? No? Yes? Yes, trust me, it's true. You don't know. <laughs> you're, you're completely fool. Johnson, he's astonishing. He's amazing. Uh, Phil Noda is doing great stuff. Phenomenal work. I mean, fantastic stuff. Um, there, there are guys doing great work here, you know? I mean, when I came back to comics in 2002, I had not drawn anything in eight years. I had no idea whether I could do it. I lost my last television job and realized that I was never going to go back to work in television. I just, I was too old and I didn't care. I was too angry and it was time to go back to work. So I pitched a book, sold the book, and I hired an assistant who was this guy who never always taught me everything I know about 3D Max and Mike. He's now a, he's basically a master of these tools. He was in his beginning of his career in that regard. And we did this book in six months. And the six months was a constant argument about how to do the work. He was a believer in the future. I had a foot firmly planted in the back. And by the end of the experience, it took me about six months to process the experience. But I realized at that point that he was right and I was wrong. That what I was doing was holding on to an idea that was increased, becoming increasingly less relevant as time passed. I understand what you're saying. I do. But I also believe that you cannot stop the flow of history. That comics, when I came into comics, looked like crap. 
They were printed on lousy. I mean, you guys had much better paper than we did. But American comics were just awful. They were, they, they were sponge. They were, they were printed with plastic plates. It was horrible looking material. Today, with computer coloring and, and computer reproduction, I've got these tiny little pens that I can get details out of and get perfect reproduction. While I was on the plane flying from the States, I did notes on colors from my, from my colorist on this new book I'm doing, the cover of the second issue. And it was breathtaking. It was fantastic. Un utterly unimaginable 10 years ago. And that's all the result of digital work. So basically, you accept, I think of it, I accept the occasional crappiness in the name of forward motion. I mean, I'm, and, and as I said, I'm, I'm an old guy playing with this stuff. You know, I mean, I haven't got that much longer to work with this. You know, if I make it to 75, I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully will have been retired for 10 years. My goal is to move to Europe in 65 and live abroad for a while. You know, take advantage of, the, of my retirement fund. You know what I'm saying? So, but I also feel that while I'm working, I want to continue playing with the stuff that everybody else is playing. Which means trying new stuff, which means stepping out of my old, my old school suit and playing with the kids. And that's important. So, um, I don't think you can overuse it. I think you can clumsily use it. I think you can ineptly do it. But I think that simply by doing it, you're trying something else. Otherwise, you, you become, you, you're, you're a weaver. You know, you're a guy who's, 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 who, who believes only in LPs and vinyl. In a, in, a, in a CD and an iPod world, you know? Um, it's one thing to hold on to tradition. You know, it's like, it's like Miles Davis always said. Grandfather Mar Wynton Marsalis never talks about tradition when he's playing with me, you know? So I like tradition, but I also believe that you can support tradition by, by embracing new media. Is that fair? What a great answer to your question, my boy. That was fantastic. Someone else, one more and we're going to go. Yes. I understood Final that, shirt guy. <laughs> that's a long one. Okay. Um, no, I, I understood that you told that uh, to make a one day, one page, to make it with uh, more effort is better than maybe one page in one week. <laughs> so to, to be effective, to gain more material in uh, appropriate time. Uh, I come from animation and mm -hmm. I see that there, um, the series are, the quality is uh, sinking down. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good in English, sorry. The quality fine. is sinking uh, on a bad level. Because? Because there's no money, there's too much material on the market. Mm -hmm. Too much... Uh, where, uh, hold on a second, where are you going? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right. But she answered, it was great. No. no, so it's too much material and I, my production where I was working was underfinanced. Mm -hmm. Like every production this time. So, this is, this is a big problem because the quality was so limited. Everyone wanted to, be, to make better quality, but there was no chance, no money. It has to be fast. And so, I say it's so much material and so much material built on the past. So, it's too much for the market. The market is not paying anymore. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why they do so much and so bad. I would say, uh, make a part. Ten, uh, so, it's so, when I see here the comics, yeah? I often have the same feeling that it's so much, but they are very fast, very fast. It's uh, it's most on effects. They work on effects, on effects, but I, I don't feel the. And I, and, I, and I don't see that. I disagree. No, I do. No, uh, because I mean, my feeling is that the job we have. First, animation is a very. It's a very different problem. It really. Yeah, is. it's it really best is. now. Yeah. Yes, but I feel that in in contemporary comics. You've got guys like Eduardo Riso, who did 100 bullets, who's, who's everything is on the page. And you have a guy like Phil Noto, who is combining digital and, 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 and line drawing. He does both. And I think both of them are achieving great goals with the tools they're choosing to use. I believe that if you're dealing with a periodical product, which is what we're talking about here, we're not doing books the way a novelist publishes a book. We're doing a monthly product. The last time I looked, a month had four weeks. In four weeks' time, when I take on the assignment of doing a monthly book, 
I believe that the four weeks means that I have four weeks to produce the amount of work that's involved in that material. So it's a matter of my deciding what it is that I can achieve in that four week period. Yeah, but, but the question is why, why doing one in a month? Why not one in two months? This is my question. <laughs> because I, this is what is imposed on me. This is, this is the, the equation that is given to me is what I work with. Okay. I mean, if, if, you choose, if you choose to do otherwise, what you are doing, you are taking yourself out of one game and moving yourself into another. The game I work in is a four-week month. Now, for the most part, the people I work with have six-week months. I don't know where those six weeks come from. I've never been able to figure that out. But I believe that my job is to be clever and brilliant and on Tuesday. No, this I understand. If you are, this is not your work. I'm, I'm asking for. I understand. This is the, the system. Because it is a periodic-based system. It is a system that's based on delivering a monthly product. Okay. If you choose not to work in that system, so be it. Find another format. But if you accept the fact that this book has to be in the stores, available for sale to her on the second Wednesday of every month then you are doing that. That is the job you take. That's the contract you commit to. Okay. I take, I, I, teach, I teach twice a year at Marvel. I go to Marvel twice a year. Marvel flies me to New York and has me speak for three days to, young, to five young talent so they can steal my career. And what I talk about is career management. I have, I have two subjects that I'm specialized in. One is graphic design and the service of narrative. Because I believe that the story is everything, even if it's terrible. And then my job is to make, this, make the, art, the writer look good. And two, managing my career. Because face it, I'm really old in a boy's business. I, meant, I said earlier that I'm older than the parents of most of my editors, and it's not a joke, it's quite true. One of the reasons and ways I've been able to do that is that despite my reputation in the context of fandom, I'm deeply and well respected in the context of my profession. People know that my word is bond. When I commit to a schedule, I live to that schedule. If someone gives me a two-month schedule, I work with that. I'm doing a, month, a, a, a serial for Dark Horse, which was done originally committed to a bi-monthly schedule. I got a call from them a month ago telling me the book is going monthly. Gotta go. I'm doing the book. I made the commitment. They changed the rules. But my contractual commitment to them, and it's not a signed contract, it's a handshake. But I take that commitment seriously. It's the rules. I have absolutely utter, an utter contempt for law. I don't believe in the law at all. The law is imposed upon us by our masters. I, on the other hand, believe in rules. The rules we make, the contract we make amongst us. The, the agreements we have. That we don't, that, that you, I don't know how it is here, but in the United States, left-hand lane on the road is where you've got drive fast. If some guy is doing the speed limit in the left-hand lane, he's breaking the rules because he's slowing me down. Okay? My, my arrangement with my client is a rule-based arrangement. It's I agree to this, he agrees to that. And we shake hands on it. And I believe in that. And I understand what you're saying. That's not the idea of my question. No, what your question is, why, why, why is it a month as opposed to yeah, two months? Yeah, as example, there is, there is a monthly, uh, maybe a weekly comic, mm -hmm. uh, and I take the other uh, extreme, this is maybe uh, Asterix. Yeah, it comes once a year, once in three years. It's the culture in which I work. This is, yeah, yeah, but this is too extreme, but, but sometimes I think if there were a, a few less, but more time in it, it would be better for everyone. Look, I also, I, I believe for, in the... For the, for the uh, for the audience and for the, uh, the, the uh, well, artists. On the one hand, I believe less is better. But on the other hand, I also recognize the fact that there's a lot of people out there who could use some work. You know, I'm serious. I mean, I, I'm grateful to have the job that I have. You know? And it's important to note, we're done? We got to go. Oh, I have, to, I have to stop. I'm so sorry. Come back to my, come out of my table, we'll have a big fight. Okay. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for your attention.